2012 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, host of the show, and we have a great show for you today. We're here at Midland High School in the welding room to meet with welding teacher Corey Pavlik and welding students Garrett Wallen and Nick Keel. Our MPS Minute will highlight the progress of our lacrosse program. In our final segment, we'll talk with Randy Shadig, our science coordinator, about the work of our community partners, the community foundations, and the remodeling that happened at our middle school science labs. Remember that you can watch the show on your local cable channel 98 and on the school website at www.mps.k12.mi.us slash mpstv. Now we'll open the show by talking with Midland High School welding teacher Corey Pavlik and students Garrett Wallen and Nick Keel. Mr. Pavlik, Garrett, Nick, welcome. Thank you. Doing well. Now, Mr. Pavlik, how long have you been with uh, Midland Public Schools and what's your teaching background? Um, this is my first year at Midland Public Schools. Um, prior to this, I taught at Bullet Creek for a year and a half. Okay. And what do you teach here at Midland? It just is only welding or do you have other classes as well? I teach all welding. I um, teach at three different levels. Um, Nick is actually in my beginning level class. It's hobby and art welding. Then we have a weld tech one. Um, let me back up. Hobby and art welding is a one semester course. Okay. Welding tech one is a year long course. And then welding tech two, Garrett is in. Um, that's a year long course. He actually has it uh, in a two hour block. Great. Right. So there's a lot of. A lot of options for students if they're interested in welding. So yes. you can take it for a semester to start with a hobby and hobby and art welding. Hobby and art welding, mm -hmm. and then you have two year-long classes, one of Correct. which is a two-hour course. Mm -hmm. Well, what are your goals or objectives for those uh, classes? Um, at the hobby and art level, it's kind of uh, just to create interest, um, get them started, uh, basically building all the way up to being able to repair stuff on your own at home, maybe mm -hmm. tackle some small projects. Um, and we do some, some artsy stuff too, some art projects in there. Um, when we get into the Weld Tech 1, it's, we're not doing much with projects unless you have time at the end. Okay. Um, it's really focused on mastering welding in all positions. So it's all the skills and... Correct. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, being able to weld in all positions, um, different types of weld joints, um, just the, the skill of welding. Weld Tech 2, um, it kind of varies. Like I said, some people have it for one hour, some people have it for two. Um, some people are real serious about doing more with it after school. Some people are not as serious. So there are assigned welds that they have to complete as well, just a little bit more advanced okay. than the Weld Tech one. But then there's also opportunity to build projects. Um, like I said, depending on where you're going with this, how far you want to go, um, there's a lot of opportunity to, to go a lot further. So at the end of the first class, you can fix a toaster or do an art project. But if you're going to fix a car, it's going to take uh, going all the, all the way through the sequence, it sounds right. like. All right. right. Uh, now, do you have students that are just from Midland High School or Maydow High School students take the classes as well? Uh, it's open to Midland High School or Dow High School. Um, currently, the, the enrollment is more leaning towards Midland High School, but it is something that we offer to both. Sure. Well, it's great that students can have the opportunity to take it if they'd like to. So. Right. Now, your typical students, uh, what do they do with their welding after they graduate? Um, some of them might not use it at all. Some of them might use it around the house, fixing things. Um, you know, I have a lot, of, a lot of people that take this program that are either involved in a farm, you know, live on a farm, um, something along those lines. I also have people who are going on to, say, Delta or Ferris, uh, going into welding. I have people who are going on further, like Garrett is going into uh, welding engineering technology, so he's actually going to Ferris for a four-year program. Wow, great. Now, tell, talk to us a little bit about the Delta College arrangement that we have. Uh, we have an articulation agreement with Delta. Um, basically, there are, I believe it's 12, there's 12 credit hours that you can earn at Delta College just for going through our entire sequence of programs here. Um, it ultimately is, a, is an, on an individual basis. If uh, it, it basically comes down to me. If I feel you have, you know, if you've completed enough to get credit for okay. welding 103 at Delta, I sign you off on that. But there's a, a total of 12 credit hours available. So you've been trained so that you can judge or, or measure a student's success in work in welding and figure out how many credits they've earned along the way. Right. So what I hear you saying is that a student at Midland High School or Dow High School that goes through the welding program would be earning credit for their high school graduation, but at the same time could also be earning college level credit too. Right, which is great because um, like when I received articulation credit from my high school, 
not only did I already have those credits accomplished, but now when, when it comes time to enroll in classes, you enroll according to how many credits you already have. So, you know, someone who has these, these credits at Delta, they can enroll earlier than someone who's coming in fresh out of high sure. school. Sure. They're taking higher level classes too in the, right. in the, in the welding area in right. particular. And what about payment? So if you're getting articulated credit, is, is that credit that you're paying for while that you're is, getting it? That is free. That is, uh, like I said, all we have to do is fill out the paperwork and that shows up as articulated credit through them. No cost besides um, registering as a student at mm -hmm. Delta. Mm -hmm. So what a great opportunity. I mean, well, just for uh, taking your high school class, students are able to earn credit for free uh, and, and then graduate with high school with college credit already in their back pocket. Right. That's great. We talk all the time about getting kids college and career ready. And, uh, this is taking it a step further, you know, doing college work while you're in high school still. Well, Gary and Nick, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, your schooling. What, what year in school are you guys right now? Uh, I'm a junior. Okay. I'm currently a senior. Okay. And plans for the future? Do you have any, anything in mind yet? Uh, I'm going to Ferris to go you're to talking? welding engineering technology, right. like Mr. Pavlak said. And uh, yeah, that's my plan. So what would that program lead you to? What would you uh, do uh, after graduation? You can go into whether you just want to be a pipe welder or whether you want to be work in a plant as a manager, like as a manager position or something like that. Or you can, yeah, go in the field. You can do whatever you really want with that. It's a very broad category. You can go into a lot of different jobs. And that's at Ferris State, you yeah, said. So you must be looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And how about you, Nick? Um, I don't have anything really uh, set yet, but I plan on going, to, going away to college for uh, a mechanical engineering degree. OK. So, and then I, I'll probably use, I'll end up using what I learned here, uh, just in the future, just for the kind of general maintenance uh, around my house and farm and stuff like that. So. Sure. We have some time to figure out the after high school things yeah. yet. So yeah. now you say you live on a small farm, right? Yeah, I live on a small farm. We've got uh, 60 acres of general, just have any general uh, equipment you need to you know, farm successfully. And, uh, so, so that stuff, it's, it's old, so it always breaks. So yeah. you got to fix it up. So was it your choice to be involved in the welding, or is this something your parents said, you need to do this so you can help us out around the farm? Uh, it was more my choice just because and along with the farm, my dad also runs a small uh, machine shop on the side. Okay. And so we got a, uh, a welder recently, and I decided if I take this, I could you know, learn that some more and be able to help her out around there. So sure. It's good to go. That's great. That's great. Now, uh, what welding classes are you guys in right now? I'm in the hobby and art welding, so just right. the first, the one semester. And are you looking forward to taking additional uh, classes yeah, next I'm year? I'm signed up for the Welding Tech one next year. So. Okay. And Nick, it sounds like, or Garrett, it sounds like you're already through the program, right? Yeah, here. I'm in the Welding Tech 2 two hour block. So I'm in the Welding Tech 2 program for two hours a day. Did you start with the hobby and art welding as a yeah. sophomore then? or? No, last year I had last year. hobby and art. Okay. And I moved up. Okay, good. Well, what do you guys like about welding? I just like the fact that you can take a pile of scrap metal or yeah. nothing and just turn it into something that works and is functional. Something useful. Something useful, yeah. Yeah, so it's creative and it's also productive too. Yeah. How about for you, Gary? It's the same thing. You can make a lot of things that you couldn't before. You'd have to go somewhere else to get it done. And I like it because it's a peace of mind. You can just get away from everything else. Mm -hmm. You have to concentrate on the bead and the weld that you're actually doing. And I like that because you, know, you can forget about everything else and you just concentrate on one thing. That's, I think that's the best thing about it for me. Can you talk a little bit about the big project you're tackling right now? Uh, I'm making a mud motor currently for duck hunting because I'm a big duck hunter. Oh, okay. So uh, it's a big air-cooled motor that I, the only thing I'd make on it was the motor. And I welded everything up on that and it's going to be on my duck boat. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm entering it in uh, the statewide competition this weekend for uh, mites. Okay. So, and so we're going to enter that and see how we do cool. it, I guess. So when do you think you'd be able to start using it in the in the field? Uh, I've already used it. Oh yeah. Uh, last weekend, I went out with it. Brought in some good footage of uh, yeah. jumping the boat over logs and. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty so, impressive. Uh, it's working out for you then. Yeah, huh? it's worked out really well. I'm really impressed actually. Well, that's great. Yeah. Dude, wh what was it like when you uh, used it for the first time when it we got over that first? Uh, yeah, I was really proud of myself actually because yeah. I didn't. It's hard to envision all these pieces of metal coming together and making something sure. that will actually run. And I actually got the motor out of a riding lawnmower, 
So I had to take that apart okay. and just seeing all the parts come together was really nice feeling that I yeah. can say I built this and when people see it out there, I can say I made everything on here. So Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Now, how's the lawn look though? Can you mow the lawn now with this thing or what? I wish, no, <laughs> unfortunately not. Can you mow my lawn more importantly with it? No. And uh, Nick, why don't you tell us about our project? Oh, this sounds like a really cool project that Corey had going on, but what's, what's one there, or that uh, Garrett had going on? What's another project that you've seen that you thought was pretty neat? Um, well, being that I've only had the first semester, sure. I haven't had a whole lot of time in it, but something that I've been working on is uh, I'm making a small uh, charcoal grill. I took a okay. six inch diameter pipe and cleaned it up, cut it in half, and so now I'm putting legs and a grate on it. And so I'll, in, in the end, I'll, I'll, I'm trying to finish it to put it in the uh, Mites competition as well. So. Sure. And definitely by the time uh, the summer hits and when it gets warm outside, right, then you'll be ready to, mm -hmm. yep. then be ready to fire that sucker up. Sure. Well, that sounds great. I want to go back to something that Garrett was saying. Uh, talk a little bit more about that. It's interesting to hear you talk about getting away from everything and being in the, in the moment, it sounds like you're talking about being totally in the moment and focused and concentrating on what you're doing. It almost sounded like you were saying, yeah, you're concentrating really hard, but it's also relaxing for you too. Right, yeah, because you don't have to worry about anything else, whether it's just issues in the family or anything like that. It's yeah. just, you have to concentrate on making the puddle and get it perfectly in line with everything and making sure you're moving perfectly and everything. It's a really like methodical motion that you do with the, mm -hmm. whether it's a TIG torch or the MIG gun or whatever it is, it's, you have to be very consistent with it and that's what you just focus on and it's nice to get away from everything else. Sure. Yeah. That's good. And has that been that way for you with welding as well or? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's, you know, building things along the way, uh, not as much because, you know, you're just kind of constructing something, you're, you're doing it to see a finished product. Um, really for me, when I learned how to do TIG welding, uh, TIG welding is very quiet, very clean, mm -hmm. it's very peaceful. Um, I always joke around, I tell people that's like my Paul Simon welding. Yeah. Like you, it's, it's just very quiet, relaxing. That TIG welding has definitely, definitely put you in a zone, put you away from everything. Because I think when most people picture welding, they picture you know, the sparks flying and the flames shooting, and you got the big helmet on, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's part of it as well. But what's, now what are you doing when you're doing TIG welding? Uh, TIG welding, you have a piece of tungsten that's your electrode. Um, that's what your current is traveling across. You're basically melting a puddle onto your base metal and you're adding a filler metal to it, but there's no sparks. There's, okay. there's a, a, little, uh, a little span of electricity, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch long across your metal and, and that's it. I mean, you still have a helmet on, you still have right. gloves on, but just much thinner. There's no mess. It's very, very peaceful. Yeah, sure. Great. Well, uh, I understand there's also a welding club outside of the classes, so why don't you guys uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, welding club meets uh, Wednesdays right after school until about what, 4, 4.45. 45. Okay. And um, basically it's just open shop. People come and work on the projects or work on welds if they're behind or, it, or you know, move ahead if you want to. Sure. And how many, how many people do you typically have in the shop during that time? It really varies week to week. Um, if it's nice outside, yeah. we might have five people. Right. Um, you know, all through the winter and everything, it seems like people were a lot more interested, probably just with less, less things going on outside. Um, you know, we've had as much as 25, 25 to 30. Oh. I mean, it's, sometimes it's busier in there after school than it is during sure. school. Uh, but there's also projects that we've done uh, through the welding club we had a woman in the community came to us and said, hey, I have an, uh, a really old bed frame and I just can't see throwing it out just because it's broken. Yeah. Is, is there any way you guys could fix it? So we had a student fix that for her and she was very, very grateful, brought us some brownies and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so That's we great. also have another project um, that we're kind of keeping a secret. It's, we'd like to unveil it before the end of the year, but yeah. something for the school that we're working on, very slow process, but. So there's no giveaway in that. We need to stay uh, tuned. Need to stay tuned on that one. Yeah. Well, you have to call us and let us know. We'll come out and get some footage for the unveiling. And, Definitely. Uh, to put that on the show for you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's some, along with the club, I, there, you mentioned some competitions. You mentioned mites that's coming up in, uh, in the springtime here. What are some of the competitions and activities outside of the school that uh, the welding program is involved in? Um, Delta College has a, sponsors a one-day competition. Um, we can take people in arc welding one and arc welding two. Um, what do we 
take four people this year? I think so. Yeah, yeah we took, took four students to that. That's a, that's a one day deal. You don't move on beyond that. It's just, you know, it, it all takes place that one day. Um, we didn't, didn't place anybody there. Uh, we've also done uh, Skills USA is the biggest competition that we're involved in. Okay. Um, that we actually hold a competition in house, basically narrow down to how many people we're allowed to take to the region. Um, Garrett actually came to the region with me. Um, that was hosted at Delta College this year, but they're not affiliated with Delta. That's just who agreed to host it. Sure. Um, at the region, we had nine people compete in um, stick, MIG, and TIG welding, and we had one TIG welder move on to the state level. That was Axel Spears. He's a senior okay. here. Um, that was this weekend in Lansing. So him and I were in Lansing all weekend and didn't place uh, in the top three in the state, um, but it was still a really good experience. Sure. Really good to get him under pressure a little bit, you know, see yeah. how you perform under pressure. And also really good for me because I've, I've never been to SkillsUSA um, for the welding category before now. So now I know a lot better what to prepare people for, sure. for that competition. Well, that sounds neat. Maybe we'll see Nick out there next year. Yeah. Oh, we do have, uh, tell them about the Ferris competition too. Yeah, the Ferris competition, I think that's coming up in a couple of weekends now. And we take, uh, I believe it's one person for each category and stick, Megan, TIG, and uh, Oxy oh yeah, oxyacetylene welding too. And you just go there and it's the same kind of thing as the one day Delta deal. You just, it's a one day and that's it. And you just get it strictly graded on your welds and the rank. And there's a lot of prizes you can win there and stuff for it. So hmm. it's a cool competition. Maybe get attention of the folks at the program at Ferris too while you're there. Okay. Now I hear you talking about four four different types of welding, and the one you already described for us, mm -hmm. the the TIG welding. TIG welding. What are the other three? Um, you guys want to talk about more? Yeah. Well, MIG welding, you have a gun, and it has a continuous spool of wire, and it's hooked up to a tank of gas, and uh, it's basically your gas is the shield metal or the shield gas for your weld. And you have the uh, electrode coming in, and it's a continuous feed. Well, as in stick welding or whatever, you, uh, well, I guess TIG too and actually selling, you have to continually feed a rod and that'll mm -hmm. get consumed up. And stick welding is just you have an electrode, you clamp it in and you actually work with it. There's no gas and the only shield is the flux coating on the outside of your rod hmm. and you just weld with that. And once you're done, you burn it up, you drop the rest of it and put a new one in and keep welding. Sounds interesting. Yep, the uh, oxygen and acetylene welding, that's the oldest form of welding. That's, right. that's where you're actually gonna see the fire. Um, you actually have a flame, you're heating up your two pieces of metal or your base metal, and you're adding in a filler rod. Um, it's the same principle as the TIG welding, but now you're using a fire as your source of sure. heat instead of the electricity. Well, with all that in mind, talk to us a little bit about safety. Obviously, it's a, it's a wonderful program. It's a very safe program. Uh, what steps do you take to ensure the student safety, your safety, and, and the, everything else? We spend a lot of time at the beginning of the year um, going over safety, and it's something that gets brought up again time after time. Sure. Um, something we're really big on is safety glasses. It's it's always a struggle. I mean, high school kids to remember to put safety glasses on, but it's every time, you know. It's a given. It right. needs to happen. Yeah. It has to happen. If you're going to be in the shop, you have to have glasses on. You have to have some kind of a boot, a leather shoe or boot. It doesn't have to be steel toe. It's in your best interest for it to be steel toe, mm -hmm. but as long as it's leather, um, just because we have a lot of slag that's hot coming right. off the metal, if that drips onto regular tennis shoes, it's going to go through them. Um, you know, jeans are fine. You know, as far as dress pants, stuff like that, depends on what material they're made out of, but... Uh, I'm not welding in this stuff. So yeah, no, yeah, no, you're, you're going to ruin it. <laughs> yeah. But no, we have welding jackets out there with leather sleeves and everything to, to keep you safe. Sure. Um, you know, the welding helmets that we have to wear, they have a shaded lens in them. Um, you know, it's just, just a constant thing, you know, no matter what's going on in the shop, you're constantly scanning to make sure, is everybody doing something safe? Right. right. That's your first priority, I'm sure, as a teacher. Absolutely. And what a, what a, a amazing program that you manage, and we really appreciate it. Uh, between making sure all the materials are here, uh, make sure the students are prepared, safe, and then, and then beginning the actual teaching process of the different types of welding. You must have a lot of different things going on at different times. You must be exhausted when you go home. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's like managing a business and then sure. educating people you know, it, all, all together at the same time. And it's it better. is. It's, you know, something that seems very simple to fix, it might get put off while I'm teaching this or making sure this is happening, right. getting people ready for competition. So it's, 
there's a there's a lot running around at the same time. Oh, no, you're doing a great job. And you guys must enjoy coming to class. Do you, do you find yourself looking forward to your welding class when you're another yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, throughout welding's, your day? Yeah, welding's one of my more, uh, probably the, my favorite class. Uh, sure. That I like, look forward to every day, so it's definitely fun. I can imagine. Yeah, same here. I look forward to coming to it because you can come in here and just weld and get away from everything. Right. Like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Just get away from everything all. And it's fun. Great. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Mr. Pavlik and Garrett and Nick, thank you very much for talking with us about welding. We, uh, we learned a lot and we really appreciate it. You're doing a great job. Keep thank it up. You. Uh, it's a great opportunity, it sounds like, for our students to learn a real relevant, real world skill, uh, to apply life lessons and become college and career ready all at the same time. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll stick around for more MPS today right after these messages. You believe this guy? Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hi, I'm Sam Gannon. I'm a senior from Midland High School, and I'm a captain of the Midland Lacrosse team. I'm Connor Bach, and I'm also a senior at HH Dow High School, and I'm a captain of the Midland Lacrosse team. Um, last year, our season in 2011 uh, went fairly well. We had a losing season, but uh, we made it to the second round of playoffs where we played Bloomfield and over. Uh, we lost 13 to 10, I believe, and in, uh, overall, the season went well. Uh, we had a lot of seniors that left which left a lot of young guys for the 2012 season, which is this year. Um, last year, we, we, like I said, we did progressively, progressively well. Um, started out kind of slow, but throughout the season, we, we uh, improved. And so overall, it was a success. Uh, for the 2012 season, we've set our, our goals a little bit higher. We hope to make a uh, deeper run to the playoffs, and we hope to improve our record from uh, what we had last year. And uh, we're hoping to improve everybody's uh, skills as far as catching and throwing. And we've got a few new guys out that uh, came out to the game this year. And uh, we hope to see them improve. And uh, we adopted the uh, new saying, one town, one team. We like to uh, build chemistry. One of our main goals is uh, we feel like we're one of the better teams in the uh, area because we actually combine the two schools together. And uh, we love it. It's great for our team chemistry. And uh, we hope to build up from our 2011 season and uh, bring some more to the table this year. Welcome back to MPS Today. As part of our occasional series on community partners, we are taking a look at the recently renovated middle school science labs. Now these resources would not have been remodeled and improved without the help of our wonderful community partners. Now here to talk with us about that is Randy Shadig, the Midland Public Schools Curriculum Specialist for Science. Randy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, Randy, what do you do in your role for the Midland Public Schools? I'm the K-12 science coordinator, which means that I work with uh, teachers K through five in the elementary level. Our, I manage the Science Resources Center, which provides materials for all of our elementary teachers. And then I also work with uh, curriculum development, work with our middle school and high school science teachers as well. Uh, in addition, I work with uh, Kathy Peretz, our lead teacher in music, and I uh, am the administrator involved with our music program. So that's a relatively new role, and I'm still learning the ins and outs of that, but uh, so I'm also involved with the music program. 
So you have a lot on your plate, it sounds like. Some days more than others, but yes. So you're working uh, K-12 in both music and science with a primary focus on science, obviously. So Yes. Now that uh, we've talked before, I think, about the kids program at the elementary level. It's a fascinating program. So helping all the teachers uh, provide different experiences for all their students. It provides... Uh, all of our teachers with the same materials so they can provide a quality experience for our elementary students. Uh, uh, tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., uh, we're going to be receiving 27 dozen chicken eggs to go out to all our first grade uh, classrooms throughout the district. So 19, 19 days later, we'll have some chickens hopping around. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right? hopefully. It's an exciting time. It's always, it's always an exciting time in the springtime when the, uh, the chicken experiment yep. comes around. So. Now, what kind of labs do we have for our students at the middle school level now? Um, they're newly re renovated labs, like you mentioned. Um, for each grade level, 6th, 7th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, at e each of our middle schools, each has their own dedicated science lab. Mm -hmm. um, the staffs at each school, they're, they're slightly different, uh, but they're, they're updated. They've got new countertops, new storage, te teacher prep areas. Um, so. Each grade level has their own individual lab that they can go to outside of their classroom to conduct their hands-on experiments. Well, that's a great resource. I mean, it, as anybody who's worked in a building as a teacher and administrator knows, it, the scheduling can be a real challenge. But if you have a lab for each grade level, it must uh, make that a lot easier for everyone to have access. It takes a little coordination on the teacher's part, obviously, to make sure that that's not booked, um, double booked, so to speak. Sure. But um, it's great to have a place to go where they can just do science. They do the classroom uh, activities back in their classroom, but they can go and get set up and, and keep that set up all day and have all, all the teachers use what, whatever activity they're doing in sixth grade or seventh grade that day. Now you mentioned the renovations. Uh, when do those take place? And you mentioned some of the things, but tell us more about what was done. Um, they did each middle school. Uh, Northeast was completed about 2007. Uh, Central and the Franklin Center in 2008, and then Jefferson in 2009. Uh, so it was a phase-in project, um, one or two labs at a time. And uh, recently we've, we've been uh, purchasing purchasing some additional materials mm -hmm. with uh, some monies that we had left over to uh, enhance the science laboratory experience a little further. Good. Well, tell us more about that experience. What are some of the, the typical labs that our, our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students will, will do during the school year? Well, both of our, uh, all, all of our middle school science classes are, are what we call an integrated science course, which okay. means they teach a little bit of biology, they teach a little bit of physics or chemistry, and they teach a little bit of earth science as well. So uh, just for example, our sixth grade students are, uh, will study ecology, uh, seventh, and they'll also study earth processes, and then also a chemistry unit. So. Uh, all of our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students will have some of those chemistry experience. They, they do a lot of microscope work. Um, it's a real focus on getting hands-on quality, quality uh, experiences for them. Great. Now we had community support to help create these, uh, to help remodel the labs for the renovations. What foundation specifically helped? Well, that was approximately a three and a half million dollar project, so it was a huge undertaking. It's a huge commitment on the part of our community to support mm -hmm. science education here in Midland. Um, the Herbert H. and Grace A. Dow Foundation, the Roland M. Gerstacker Foundation, the Dow Chemical Foundation, the Charles J. Strosacker Foundation, uh, the Dow Corning Foundation, and the uh, Midland Area Community Foundation all contributed to, came together contributed and supported that undertaking. Like I said, it was a, a huge undertaking and a huge commitment to, to support science education. Sure. Well, and it's a great example of, of how uh, the school district and the community can work together to uh, create more opportunities for our students. Absolutely. It's, uh, uh, there's always been a lot of support for, for not just science education, but mm -hmm. for all, all areas of, of our uh, uh, education for our students. So it's, uh, it's kind of exciting to be a part of that. Sure, of course. Well, talk a little bit more about the curriculum. You mentioned that in the middle school, students will be taking a look at earth sciences, uh, biology, and then chemistry and physics. Is that right? Uh, absolutely, All yes. Right. So then when they are finished with middle school, what, what kind of classes will those students be taking at the high school level? They'll, they'll move on to the high school, and there they have a wide variety of choices. Uh, um, state requirements require us to, for all students to take a biology course, 
a physics or a chemistry course and then one additional science course. Um, and as they progress through the to their up last couple years, they'll have opportunities to take things like anatomy and physiology, advanced placement courses in chemistry and physics and biology, uh, IB courses for the International Baccalaureate. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer those in physics and chemistry and biology. So it, it's it's really important that they get a good quality education, lay that foundation in middle school, right. so that they can take advantage of the the wide variety of opportunities they have at the high school. So the middle school program, it sounds like, does a nice job of laying the groundwork so that when students are done with the required classes at the high school level, they can be ready to at least have an idea of what they have to choose from. And that, that's absolutely the goal, to, uh, to prepare students for that next level. And then obviously over our high school uh, curriculum is to prepare students to go on to college or to be career ready and give them all the skills that uh, they're going to need to succeed at that next level. Well, we're here to talk about the middle school labs, but I, I, I want to detour just for a moment into that. So let, let's talk a little bit about the relevance and the college and career ready aspect of it. You know, our typical uh, high school graduate from the Midland Public Schools, whether they go to, to Dow High School or Midland High School, what do you think they'll be prepared to do either in the work world, in the world of science, or in the college area, uh, in college, in studying science? Obviously, we, we've... Uh have a long history of preparing students very well to sure. succeed at uh, whatever college or university they, they choose to go to. Um, we've got students that go all over the country and, and have been very, very successful. Um, and then obviously there's some students that are going to make that transition not to college but to be career ready. And uh, those hands-on skills, those teamwork skills, uh, communication skills are important. Uh, um, all of our teachers really work hard to get students in the lab where they work on that collaboration and, and teamwork, which are becoming such essential components of the business and, and work world. So it's not just the, the academic skills that they're gaining, but it's the, the, work, the real world work skills that they need as well. A absolutely. That's, uh, that's an important component, and, and science plays into so many aspects of our daily lives, whether sure. it's in the, in the work world or just in, in living our own lives. It's, uh, in the kitchen. Or in wherever. the kitchen or wherever. Yeah. So it's important to have those kind of skills that they can take forward. Great. Well, let's go take a look at one of the labs. Can you show us around a little bit? Sure, I'd be glad to. We're here at Northeast Middle School with Randy Shady to take a look at one of the middle school science labs that was recently renovated with the assistance of our community partners, the Community Foundations. Uh, Randy, why don't you show us around a little bit? Sure. This is a seventh grade science lab here at Northeast, and it's a, a very typical of the, the, the labs you'll find throughout the district now. Uh, each building is a little bit different, but uh, pretty consistent in their design and layout. Uh, you'll see you've got uh, a lot of storage. Um, they're prepared. They've got microscopes out. Mrs. Christensen has uh, seventh grade students coming in to do some uh, microscope work in just a few minutes. Um, but this is a very typical lab. And uh, uh, students have a lot of opportunities. There's good room. There's good lighting. And uh, there's also some important safety features that uh, we wanted to include in our lab. So we're going to take a look at those right now. Any lab needs to have a safety shower, an eye wash station. You can see that right here. It's uh, available in case of any type of emergency. Um, typical, again, in any type of lab. And uh, like I mentioned, the, the labs here at Northeast will be very similar. Um, renovated just, uh, just a few years ago, and it provides a real good, good opportunity for our students. Some of the technology that we included with the renovation includes uh, uh, all the labs are, have wireless capability. Uh, students have laptops that are available. Um, we've got uh, a document camera, and you can see she's got a, a camera mounted on one of her microscopes right here so she can project some images up on the screen as she does, uh, does her pre-lab with her students. Um, again, some more microscopes that we have. Uh, these are stereo microscopes for looking at a little bit bigger organisms. So let's walk on back here. One of the one of the final safety features is our fume hood right there. That's uh, in case you're doing an experiment that uh, generates some noxious gas gases, those will be taken right outside. Uh, again, an important part of any lab. You can see that there's a, a lot of storage throughout the room. Um, there's a separate teacher lab prep room that uh, contains materials. So it's uh, really a, a fine facility. It's excellent. Why don't you uh, tell us what's going on here at this uh, workstation? Typical station, it's got gas, it's got water, uh, it's electrical and microscopes and uh, structures for uh, uh, doing physics experiments. So it's a real, uh, real top quality 
situation. Great. Well, thank you for showing right. us around, and, and thank you to our community partners for helping us with the middle school labs.